welcome to the driver mod. My name is Anthony. We're going to show you how to load the Futuro trailer. Thank you for renting the trailer out. This video is going to be a step-by-step -step process on how to load your car onto the Futura trailer. Once you've got the trailer hooked up to the tow vehicle, you want it to be hooked up to the tow vehicle when you load it because uh, you don't want all the weight of the vehicle on the uh, trailer jack. So we've got it hooked up. First thing you're going to go around and do is pull the wheel arch locks. And while you're walking around behind the trailer, you're going to release the license plate and fold it up and lock it. And then there's two more wheel arch locks. Next, you're going to come over to the basically the operating compartment of the trailer. You're going to open that and you're going to take this red key blade. This is the main power key for the entire trailer. Without this, the trailer won't turn on and function. You're going to insert that into the receptacle right there and turn it on and you'll see a voltage read. Next, you're going to take the remote that says trailer and to turn it on, you're going to push the up and the down button simultaneously and you'll see a red LED come on. Now the trailer is on, the remote is on. Now we can go ahead and lower the trailer and get it into the loading position. So simply push and hold the down button. Observe that all the wheel arches are moving so you know you unlatched all of them properly. And you're gonna lower the back of the trailer until it hits the ground. Now, once the rear of the trailer does make contact with the ground, you're then gonna to move to the front of the trailer and you're gonna observe the trailer and you're gonna to continue to, to lower the trailer until you see the front stop moving. It's just gonna be something you're gonna to have to look for by eye. The reason you don't wanna to continue to let it go down when the trailer stops moving is you're gonna unwind the winch system too much on the cables and then you'll be in a world of hurt. Once the trailer is in the fully lowered position, you can now position your car to drive it up onto the trailer. Now the loading deck of the trailer at its narrowest point is 81 inches. So if you're unsure if your car can fit on the trailer, make sure you measure the widest point on the wheel to wheel to make sure that it can clear that. If you have any sort of bumpers or aero devices, you'll also want to make sure it clears the side running boards, which stand about six inches tall. We've loaded the GT350 on here a number of times. We have plenty of space on each side. So I've pretty much got, got this down to a science to where I can just eyeball the driver's side and I know the passenger side is good. So now we're gonna go ahead and load the car onto the trailer. When you do load the car onto the trailer, make sure you have the remote in your pocket because once you drive it onto the trailer, you can't open your doors with the wheel arches up. So you'll need to have the remote with you in the car when you load it. Now, if you do have a really low car with an overhanging bumper or a, a large splitter, you may need to use some wood extensions because even as low as this trailer goes, not everything clears. Line those up with the wheels, and now we're good to load it. Now you may need a front spotter so you know how far you can go up on the trailer, but you want to get as much of the weight as far forward as possible. Once you're in this position, you're good with how far the car is forward. Go ahead and set your parking brake in case you forget that you're on a slope and your foot comes off the brake. And then if, if the remote has timed out, go ahead and turn that back on. And now we're gonna push the up button. Now when you're doing this, the front wheel arch will hit first and then you keep holding the button until the rear 
stops. As soon as it makes contact, you let off because then you don't want to put too much tension on the system. So boom, that one's contacted. That one's contacted. Now, go ahead and roll up your windows. And open your door. Just be careful, every car is different. But I know if I put the GT350 right where it's at, I can open up the door to the second position and I have about a half an inch of clearance between the wheel arch and the door. Again, make sure your e-brake's on, let off the brake, and you can shut off the car and we're done with the interior part of the car. Now the securing portion of the car is basically the exact opposite uh, when we loaded it. I like to go around and hit all the latches first license plate now we can go ahead and move to strapping down the car we're done with the power side of the trailer so go ahead and shut that system down and now we're gonna take our ratchet strap and our wheel tie all right each one of these wheels is going to be loaded in the exact same fashion. So the way we look, the way we secure this wheel, you're going to do that to the rest of the wheels on the vehicle. And I always put the ratcheting side or the uh, tightening handle towards the front or the rear of the vehicle. I don't put it right here. You're going to leave yourself about a foot of slack or extra strapping. We're on the driver's side of the vehicle, so. The strap is going to sit right here in the wheel. The restraining strap is going to go through the bottom of the strap and then back down through the other side. So what you should have in the end is basically a loop with the strap like that. Now you go ahead and make your tie down hook and loop it into the D-ring. And then you simply take the strap and work it over the tire. And you want to get it to the back side to where you can see the strap between the wheel and the suspension. So just like that. And you want this to be as level as possible. Now we're going to go ahead and take the slack out and I'll show you what to pay attention to next. Once we have both hooks engaged, Go ahead and take all the slack out of the system. And this is where you're gonna make your pre-tightening adjustments. You want these to be 45 degree angles and you want it to be as centered as possible. Now as you take the slack out, this side is going to strain and this side is gonna be pulled in. So you wanna kind of preload it where you have a little bit of extra room on this side. Once you have it looking about like that, strap center line of the wheel, 45 degree angles, strap between the wheel and the suspension on the other on the back side, we're good to go ahead and tighten this down. Now I don't fully lock it down on the first wheel because we have three of the wheels to tighten down. I only go around and make my final tightening adjustments when I'm done with all four wheels. But as long as the wheel and the strap situation looks like this, again, 45 degree angles, the wheel is secure. You may have to adjust these D-rings to fit your car specifically. These D-rings are very easy to maneuver. All you simply do is pull back on the mechanical tab and then slide it back. And pull back on this and slide it back and it'll pop out of the retainers. We're gonna go ahead and get all four of these wheels locked down and show you what the final end product looks like.
All right, guys, the trailer is fully loaded. The car is fully secure. We've got our four straps tied down, 45 degree angles, center line of the wheel. It doesn't have to be perfect, guys. That will do the trick. Double checked all our latches, license plate secure. We are good to travel. Now, we're just gonna go over a couple extra things that come with the trailer, just in case you need to disconnect it and what have you. Uh, we do have a trailer ball lock. Key is on the, uh, the key ring. Now, the battery is self-charging with this solar panel. However, if you do have to charge the battery uh, manually, there is a charger and you just connect the charger to the charging port right there. We have a couple wood blocks in here, again, to help ease of loading and loading the cars. A couple smaller ratchet straps for various, you know, just trailer things. And then when you are unhooking and hooking up the trailer to your tow vehicle, um, you'll see the wheel. I need to replace this wheel, something happened, but you'll see this pin right here. This hammer is just to help knock that pin to fully seat it so that the wheel is in the lock position. That's all the hammer is there for. Um, when you do bring this up, you're gonna raise it until the wheel is in the fully locked position. And then once that happens, just give this a couple hits you want this to really be secure there. That's how that wheel got damaged. Uh, someone didn't do that and uh, I didn't notice and I was driving it and the wheel worked itself down and came into contact with the ground and uh, obviously overheated because it's not made to go 60 miles an hour. But all in all, again, thank you for renting out the trailer. If you do have any further specific questions, let me know. Text me or call me.